The worst food that you can eat for insulin resistance is not one singular food. It's a combination of foods, and it's actually a combination of macronutrients. Combining fats and carbohydrates in one meal sounds like something that is very good for glucose control, and in theory it is, except when we get into the world of what is called overnutrition or overfeeding, which Again, it sounds like you would have to be a glutton to be overfeeding, but a large majority of us are in this overfeeding state or overnutrition. Sounds very complex, but it's actually quite simple. In a healthy person, we can metabolize carbs and fats at the same time quite effectively until we start having too much carbs and fats at the same time. And I'll just give you a very simple colloquial example. If you go out and you eat 100 grams of fat and 200 grams of carbs in five minutes, even a healthy person is probably going to have a little bit of a struggle metabolizing those things together. Why is this? Well, it's because we require different transport vehicles for these different fuels. And when you overload and overfeed, you run out of transport vehicles and you start having a problem. And I'll explain a little bit more what that means. Now, there's one in vitro study that I want to highlight first because it makes some sense of all this, but the downside is it's an in vitro study, which means it's not directly in like a physical human, it's in you know, cells, but it's still very interesting. This study was published in endocrinology and it suggested that when you combine high amounts of fat, free fatty acids from the diet, alongside high glucose, whether it's high glucose from carbohydrates or high glucose because you're insulin resistant, or diabetic, when they are combined, it can lead to what is called pancreatic beta cell death. Pancreatic beta cells are what produce insulin. So when those cells die, do the math. You're not producing insulin and you become more insulin resistant. So it's a situation that comes to be in people that are already having high levels of glucose, insulin resistant, diabetic people. So then you have carbs and fats combined and you have an elevation of fats and an elevation of glucose above your already elevated diabetic glucose levels. That can lead to more pancreatic cell death, putting you further into insulin resistance. Again, that's an in vitro study, so we can't 100% take it to the bank. But what was interesting is the only fat that did not cause this was something called omega-9, which is a monounsaturated fat that's typically found in generally things like macadamia nuts. So it's a further kind of check mark on the whole Mediterranean approach that I tend to say is the best, like at least my opinion. Having those monounsaturated fats are very good for insulin, that whole system, right? The whole insulin sensitivity process. But we have to look at something called metabolic gridlock in more detail with unhealthy people to understand how this really works. So I want you to visualize like trying to cram a bunch of marbles into a water bottle. If you're dripping those marbles in, you could do it. You could drip marble by marble into the water bottle. But now I want you to imagine taking a whole bucket of marbles and dumping it onto the water bottle, right? Some of them are gonna go in, but a lot of them are just gonna spill out and they're gonna make a mess everywhere that you have to clean up. Well, I want you to visualize those marbles going everywhere as sort of reactive oxygen species. Now you have cleanup your body has to do. It has to scavenge, scavenge the marbles, have to scavenge the free radicals. This very process of having higher levels of free radicals circulating is a huge impediment to staving off insulin resistance. So now you have another factor. Now, I have more details to share this, but what are some things that you can do? Some of the simplest things, and I actually take a playbook from some people that I know, is eating meals that are only a few ingredients. Okay, so like if you can take a look at what you're eating and say, hey, like I don't want my body to have to deal with more than a few things at one time. That's a great way to look at things. That's like a whole food approach, right? That's step one. Hey, I'm not gonna have more than five major ingredients in my meal, not counting like some spices and stuff, but like I'm not gonna have this smorgasbord of a hundred different things. That's very important. Okay, but another piece that you can simply do is consolidate your meals that have fats and protein, and then consolidate your meals that have protein and carbohydrates, but try to keep the fats and the carbs separate. Now, people are gonna say, hey, the best thing to do to reduce glucose spikes is to put clothes on your carbs. 
Okay, that means don't just have carbs with only carbs. You should put protein or you should put fats with it. Protein, I 100% stand behind. Protein's gonna be a great thing to add to carbs. Fats adding to carbs, I question that. Okay, and I'll explain why in more detail. But if you separate, I'm gonna have carbohydrates, but I'm gonna have carbs and protein at that specific time. I'm gonna have proteins and fats at this specific time. Clear lines of delineation. Okay, whether you wanna believe me or not, it's an easy thing to implement to see if it gets better. I also would recommend adding monounsaturated fats, olive oil, straight up avocados, avocado oil, some nuts, but really the main nut being macadamia nuts because of that omega-9. I put a link down below if you need a snack. House of Macadamias has, of course, macadamia nuts, but they also have macadamia nut bars where the first ingredient is macadamia nuts and there's no sugar added, nothing like that. They also have sugar-free chocolate and white chocolate covered macadamia nuts. So if you need like just a treat that's sweet, or if you just want straight up like salsa flavored macadamia, it's just incredible stuff. And that link down below will save you 20% off using code THOMAS20. The macadamia nut bars, like the mocha flavor is like, just trust me on it. So that link down below, 20% off. So let's talk about what happens in a healthy person when you consume a fat and a carb together. When you consume a fat and a carb together, the fats are gonna slow down the digestion of the carbohydrates. You're gonna have less of a glucose response. And if you look at the data, and there was an interesting study that looked at this, you're going to see a nice surge in what is called the respiratory quotient, which is indicative of the body switching over to utilizing carbohydrates. So what that means is if me as a healthy person, I take in a little bit of fat and a little bit of carbohydrates, my body's gonna preferentially use those carbohydrates, no big deal, change in the respiratory quotient, and that means that my body has effectively switched and can use those carbs just fine. Then a little while later in what is called postprandial, like after eating, my body turns into this mode where it can effectively handle the carbs and the fats together. So generally speaking, when you eat fats and carbs together, the body will take in the carbohydrates first, as we see in this surge of the respiratory quotient, okay? But then as time goes on, the body starts to assimilate both at the same time because things are moving slower and it can handle it. In an unhealthy person that is metabolically inflexible, that ability to switch back and forth and that respiratory quotient to change is lost. You see it lost in people that are obese. You see it lost in people that are metabolically inflexible. You see it lost in diabetics and insulin resistant people. Okay, so it's not apples to apples. A healthy person can effectively deal with carbs and fats together as long as it's not in a caloric surplus. An unhealthy, metabolically inflexible, or insulin resistant or diabetic person needs to exercise caution here. More research needs to be done to fully understand all the mechanisms of this metabolic gridlock. But this metabolic gridlock is really a problem for the insulin resistant population. So it doesn't necessarily apply to the healthy. A quick touch on the overfeeding piece. Overfeeding means you're taking in a lot of food at once. I can safely say that having a small amount of carbs and a small amount of fat together is not gonna be the end of the world. So when we think about all the things in life that are unhealthy, cakes, donuts, pizza, what's the common denominator there? Well, high calories, overnutrition for sure, but high amounts of fat, high amounts of carbs, high amounts of calories in culmination with each other. That is where we run into this issue. And it further confirms this prospect or hypothesis of metabolic gridlock. Sure, a healthy person could probably eat a piece of pizza and not have a big problem. But someone that's metabolically inflexible and unhealthy, they can, they'll survive if they eat that slice of pizza. But the impact is gonna be a lot different. Interesting, I'll see you tomorrow.